You know, I've always wondered what it would be like to hit golf balls that were hundreds of years old. Should we find out together? Let's go. So we drove all the way to Pinehurst, North Carolina to come here, the old golf shop, so we can get the golf balls required for this video. Rumor has it, this guy has the best selection of golf, antiques, classics, there is. Hello? This is Bob Hansen, owner of the old uh, golf shop. How long have you been here? 10 years. Wow. Been in Pinehurst 25 and been doing golf for 52 years. All right, so we're looking for golf balls from as far back as we can go. Okay. And uh, to, you know, as far to today as we can get. Okay, well, let's right. take a look. All right. So here's a ball from about 18... 95. Ooh. It's a mesh pattern ball, but a very, very well made ball. So then you would get into a ball like that, which is a bramble. The, the little bumps stick out rather than. Mm. So that ball um, is from about 1910. Ooh. Now, what is this thing? That's an imitation feather ball. Then so this would be a replica of what year? Of 1840. 1840. Replica, so it is a feather ball. Yes, well, it is. It's actually made like a feather ball by a modern maker, so you can have what would be as close to a, a, an honest period ball as possible. Wait, so, here's this one? Yep, that, this is more like 25 and 30, like Bobby Jones would have played with. Oh, Bobby Jones right there, okay. So this would be what year here? That would be somewhere around 1950. Okay. And from then on, all balls were dimple pattern. So let me get a couple of the, um, the dimple ones, too, from... The 60s, I guess, or 70s. And then we're back to. Uh, that is a very rare, but scarce, black Nike ball. Bob has hooked us up with our balls for the testing. And uh, we're going to have a good time and see how far, really specifically, we've come with golf balls. Okay, I also got this Hickory 5-iron. We're gonna be testing these with, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Whew, just gotta get back to a little warmer weather. Let's go. Okay, we are going to putt with these right now. Look at that. And we're gonna go from newest to oldest and give you a good idea of the feel and the roll. And I'll give you a close-up slow-mo of a ball putter on club so you can get a good idea of what's happening right off the face at impact. Pro V1X is up first. Obviously, looks and sounds phenomenal. Next up is this Nike Black. Hard to find, and uh, no wonder they don't make them anymore. Because they're actually hard to find on the golf course. All right, going older now, Stan Thompson, uh, the king. It's got some signatures on it, but uh, Bob said uh, those are unimportant. So, sorry, whoever signed this. You're important. You are. Like kind of that old Bellotta feel. I actually like that. It brings back good memories and some bad ones. Now we're on this old Heaton, it seems like it's called, and it's obviously not totally round. That one sounded like I hit a rock, and it seems like you definitely have to put the dimples in the right orientation or it's gonna go offline when you're putting. Now we got this little guy with the square dimple pattern. It's incredibly heavy for the, its size. Well, 
What was weird about that one is they went from that super soft feel, that was, felt like rubber almost, to that rock hard, the next iteration of the golf ball. They definitely went extreme from soft to hard. <laughs> Going a little older, we got this bad doggy, and this one, very similar to the previous one, the newer model, the one we just hit, was just heavier than this. This is a little bit lighter than the previous one. Thought I made that, but it's equally as soft. Like a real cushy feel. Now, older than that is this bad boy here. And here you see the dimples are now raised up. As it got newer, they said, no, let's push them down. Science, but pre-science, dimples up. For as old as it is, I actually like it. I don't know why you went from that feel to extra soft, but they did. That's like pretty close to today's um, feel. I mean, obviously it's not gonna go as far, but in terms of putting feel, similar. In early 1900s, late 1800s, here we go. This guy, I wouldn't call them dimples. They're more like streets or roads or just like strips that they um, carved out of it. But it's very round for as old as it is. So it's got this little hole in it, kind of on the side. Wow. I made one, so far the oldest one I made. It sounded like I hit a rock. It was click. That was the rockiest sound so far. Then we're talking early 1800s, you would have a feathery. This is a replica feathery, so made identical to how they were originally. Feathers wound on the inside with a leather cover. It kind of looks like a baseball, as you can see. I don't know who stamped it. Looks like a Rawlings stamp, but I'm not sure. Either way, really awesome. Replica feathery should perform identical to how they did in the early 1800s. That would take some practice to get that done right, for sure. That feels like you hit a um, soft, like practice softball that's been used a lot. Next test module is up. We are going to chip newest to oldest from here, right, onto the green with our 1800 and something mashy. Look at this thing. It has zero bounce, you know, bounce should, the sole should come down. It does not come down. They didn't know about bounce. Bob Vokey wasn't alive back then, so they, they wouldn't know. Look how sharp this sucker is. I mean, you could butter your bread with that. You, I might later. Here we go. Pro V1 X is up. I might have to test, I don't think it's, it's more like a seven iron. Whatever it looks, that's about what it is. Hold on. Yeah, it's more seven iron length. It's pretty much seven iron length. We're gonna call it a seven. Nike ball is up. I think it's pretty hard though, I don't like it. All right, our autograph ball. Love this thing, kind of balada style. I like that one. It's got a lot of pop off the hit. All right, going older. It's like 20s, 1930s-ish, right here. Well, I guess four miles an hour of club head speed was a little too much for this bad boy. Well, one soldier has died. Guess we'll have to rip that open later. Look at that. That cover just disintegrated. They make them better than they used to, at least this era. Moving on, Bobby Jones. Honestly, you can't even feel impact. It's like you, no feel whatsoever. A few years older, here we go. I like this one, it's heavy. It's a 
same as the other one. There's no feel whatsoever. Kind of our first real dimple pattern golf ball. I'm surprised this thing's still alive. It's funny because that's older and it went from you can actually feel it to hey, let's make it so you can't feel anything. Great idea. No, it was a horrible idea. 18 something or other right here. See, I'm, I was born too late. I should have been born like 18, 20, 30, 40, right around there. Oh well, missed my calling, missed my time. Let's see how old Feathery does, chipping. It's like playing golf with a hacky sack. Can you believe that? Like one chip shot and this thing just got annihilated. So I wasn't gonna do this, but I figure it's already broken. We're going back in time here. This is crunchy. Ooh. I mean, stuff's flying off here. Look at that. This is like a goo in there. Oh yeah, it is like tar and rubber. I, I guess like old tire plants or something used to make these balls. There you go, it's gross. Now comes the time where we're gonna see how far technology has come since the beginning of time with the feathery ball all the way to today with today's technology. But we are going to use the old school mashi to see uh, what happens here. And we will hit one shot with the old school mashi and one with today's technology. Behind me, we will have TrackMan to see where the shot goes. However, because we're using such old balls, we're gonna use the Unicor iMini for exact spin rate numbers. The iMini is a camera-based system, so it'll pick up exactly what is happening. It sends a signal to a team of NASA engineers, and within three milliseconds, they combobulate all the numbers and send back the exact data results. That might not be totally accurate, but this is accurate especially when it comes to balls like this. Let us begin Pro V1X. I don't wanna break anything here, especially the club. Pretty good, 6,200 backspin. And with that smooth little swing, carried 104, all right. Here we go, moving on. Nike, Nike one ball. Oh, it can't see it. It can't see, it can't see the black Nike ball. Well, maybe TrackMan will pick it up. This will be inaccurate. It's too dark to see, but TrackMan estimates 7430, so Unicor cannot pick up the black ball. All right, here we go, next one. Can you see this one? Yeah, yeah. Let's be honest, that black ball was a horrible idea to begin with. Here we go. I like that feel. Only 99 yard carry and 5,600 spin. Oh, look at that. That's like our Jack Nicholas ball. That's the sweet spot of this club, believe it or not. All right, moving on. Tiny ball here. Well, that felt good. 91, backspin 64.58. Look how low that went. Moving on, just a couple years older. That felt good too. 92, 97 here on Unicore. And look at that impact position here. Look at that, that's pretty good. You can see it right in there. This ball's getting beat down. It might not make it to the course. This one might die. Here we go. <laughs> They're coming apart, 84 yards, 48, 100 spin, 48.11. Wow, this thing ain't gonna make it. Look at that. Mm. 
Well, so far, so good. It's hanging in there. Oh, I just knew that was going to sound weird. 113 carry. You know, one, Unicor says 112. It's not picking it up on the app. So unfortunately, we don't have any impacts. It's not picking up all, like it's getting the reading here. So we'll give you all those numbers that Unicor is saying, but we got 2,434 spin, 112 carry. And now we're about to hit the feathery. Trackman's picking that one up pretty good. So we're getting two good readings. The app's just not picking up everything, unfortunately. So we can get out of a feathery and a mashy club. Eighty-five yard carry, and thirty-five ninety-seven spin. That felt pretty good. No impact whatsoever. I love that. Like zero joint problems playing a feathery and a mashy. That felt good. But it's still an eighty-five yard carry with like a seven iron. Okay, now we've got the Titleist T one hundred and fifty iron. We got Unicor giving us great camera base readings. The app may or may not give us anything. And we're gonna start with the uh, Pro V1X, work our way back in time. Here we go. Okay, 161 carry, 5,800 spin. Good looking shot. Felt good about that. And the app's not picking it up, so I just have to give you the numbers here. Okay, black Nike golf ball. Now, Unicor didn't pick this up last time. We'll see if it picks it up. Didn't hit it great. But, all right, 143, kind of Jack Nicholas golf ball here. Eh, 123, not great. It's like those bad shots are really bad. Oh, the app got that one, so that was pretty good. I'm kind of scared at this point that the balls are going to just explode and hit me in the face. Well, that felt good. Nice and soft, 110 carry. That was kind of cool. Felt good. Like the sound of that one. Moving on. Uh, 6,500 backspin there. Yeah, so Trackman's got that one pretty good too. This ball's about at the end of its life cycle here. 122. And we got 59.13 spin. Oh, and you could see <laughs> at impact. Look at that. Oh, the ball is just shattering. We got a little impact there. You could hear it. That is cool. Moving on to the next one. This ball's ready to die. <laughs> it sounds like nothing. 98 yards. Oh, you can see the junk coming off that too. Look at that. That is cool. <laughs> Look at that impact position. Oh my goodness. Look at that. You don't need a marker to know where you hit these balls. Next one, oh, this thing is ready to die. Oh, that sounded like I hit a rock. Oh, look at that. Ah, oh, that sounded horrible. 102, 42, 22 spin. The sound of that is like you're literally hitting a rock. Mm. Okay, feathery, replica feathery golf ball. Let's see what this turns out. It, it felt good uh, with the mashy, so I'd imagine this would be pretty solid. It's what kind of distance we get out of here. Today's technology. 98, I love that. What's the spin on that? 78, 56 spin. I mean, you could see the difference. Here on Unicorn, it's getting accurate. It's been tons of spin on that shot. You're compressing it. It seems to me so far, like with irons, the biggest difference in technology over the years isn't with the club, it's with the ball. Okay, let's see how much more distance we get with uh, today's drivers, today's golf ball versus a feathery from 300 years ago. First off, uh, Pro V1X. We're just gonna take smooth swings here, try to get the exact same type of swing. Okay, so that was a two, Unicor says 266 carry, 151 ball speed with a 2288 backspin. So pretty good. Now we're gonna try to do a replica version 
with the feathery ball and see what we get. Oh, it's kind of a, just your standard fairway finder swing. So let's, let's try to do the same thing here. <laughs> 175 carry, 112 ball speed, which is pretty good, 1920 backspin. What kind of ball compression do you got there? Let's look at that, that one recorded it. It kind of gets destroyed a little as you make impact. Stuff flies off of it for sure. <laughs> That's pretty good. Look at that. Look at that impact position. Oh my gosh. That's not a bad spot. A little high on the face, on the toe. A little out. Yeah, nice draw spin typically. Let's wrap this up by actually playing with this thing and seeing what happens in reality. Okay, we're going to play this hole here. Long par four. We're going to play it with the Pro V1X and the replica feathery ball. We're going to use the best old club we got persimmon headed driver here and then we're going to use our mashy iron and we'll put out with a regular putter let's see what kind of difference there is between these two pro v1 is up first well, that's a good drop now the feather That went like 40 yards. <laughs> I hit it good too. My ball is right here. It went maybe 80 yards. And I didn't look at my impact. It's up here. I didn't top it. It looked like I topped it. The ball started to take off and then it just dived straight down. But if I topped it, there'd be ball mark way down here. It's not, it's right there in the perfect spot. And my Pro V1's way up there, 150 yards farther. At least we hit a fairway here. And now mashy the rest of the way. It, we gotta play kind of a different game right now. We gotta meander our way uh, on the fairway. So no cutting corners with this bad boy. Sad thing is I don't even know how far my second shot's gonna go. Moseying along. I'm still not to where my drive was with the Pro V1X. Let's see how much farther the drive was with the other ball. All right, my second shot went 75 yards. We're still not at my Pro V1X drive. And I'm hitting these good. I'll tell you what, it's a fun game playing like this. It's like you gotta really kinda plot your way along. And the slower and smoother I swing, the farther it goes. That one went farther and I swung a lot slower. I'll pace it off for you. So here's my Pro V1X. It went 155 yards farther on the tee shot than feathery. Now we're hitting our second shot Pro V1 with the mashy two. The green, we have like 100 yards, so we gotta smooth it up in there. Remember, back in the day, these guys didn't have 14 clubs. They only had a few. They had like this, a driver, wood thing, and like a wedge. And the wedges came even later, but so they were kind of playing with one claw, just a couple clubs. Whoops. Pretty good, good distance control. Uh, just, I was trying to cut it in there. I, I guess you can't really, not really many grooves on here to cut it with, but I should have thought about that ahead of time. Let's hit our fourth shot with feathery. Okay, our third shot went 103 yards with mashy and feathery. So we have about 80, 90 yards left, nearly a full swing. Let's see if we can get up there and um, maybe get a five. We're finding. That's pretty good. Rock and roll, let's do it. Chipping with our little mashy here, which we've had some practice with already. So let's see if we can chip this up there and get a par. Oh, didn't carry far enough. Uh-oh, that's why some genius guy later invented the high lofted mashy. Hmm. One, two, three, four, putting five. We're putting five for both. <laughs> now back in the day, you wouldn't get the market. You'd have to finish it. And so that's what we're doing. And you could stymie each other, meaning your ball, if you're playing match play, your ball's in their way. Too bad, so sad. You gotta still play it, guy farther away. That's why you see old clips of guys like chipping over a ball. Because they couldn't, that's how it worked. Oh, 
All right, I have that for six. Oh. All right, so Pro V1X was a six and a feathery 200 year old ball, sort of seven. But the seven was 10 shots more fun than today's technology. I think we should have events where you're playing feathery balls with hickory shafted clubs. It's a whole new game. It's a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it. Hope this video was uh, fun for everybody. Love you guys, see you next time.